Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at Vashdor's new rules. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. Vashdor's rules revealed. Join the cult of the Arcfane with a free army of renown. Vashdor the Arcfane is beholden to no god but himself. He shepherds his own congregation of indentured demons to work with the soul forges and fight his wars. Known as the cult of the Arcfane, this motley collection of damned mortals and demon engines fights with the infernal precision of their patron. Does an unholy fusion of warp trickery and demon engines sound like your brand of chaos? Good news, the cogs of Ashtor are recruiting, and you can meld your chaos space marine army into a form that will please the mechanical monster by downloading this army of renown below. This is a perfect way to get the most from your Molophines and defilers. Alright, so first let's take a look at Vashdor's actual rules, and then we can look at the Army of Renown. So Vashdor the Arcfane, 13 power level, uh, and he does bracket 8 plus wounds, 4 to 7 wounds, and 1 to 3 wounds. Starts with move 12, brackets down to 10 and 8. Starts with attack 7, brackets down to 6 and 5. So he is still pretty formidable, even with one wound remaining. But he does lose a little bit of movement and attacks as he brackets. Uh, weapon skill is 2, ballistic skill is 3, strength and toughness 7, wounds 14, leadership 9, 2 up save. So he's very durable, toughness 7 is pretty beast right there. He is obviously targetable, so you're not going to be able to hide him uh, behind other units or anything like that. Vashtor the Arcfane is equipped with Vashtor's Claw, Vashtor's Hammer, and your army can only include one Vashtor the Arcfane. So we see the two weapon profiles below, the Claw has a ranged attack. 12 inch range, assault D6, strength 5, minus 2, 1 damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, the attack automatically hits the target. So it is essentially a flamer weapon, uh, assault D6. So you're going to average 3 or 4 shots, they're going to hit automatically, and then you have strength 5. So realistically, you should be able to kill roughly 1 space marine equivalent with this. Or alternatively, if you were shooting something super weak like termagants or something like that, you're probably going to kill like two or three. So honestly, pretty underwhelming. And then next we have Vashtor's Hammer, his melee weapon, times two strength. So that's going to give him 14 strength, minus two AP, which is pretty good. I would rather see it at like three or four, just with everything going on in the meta right now, uh, but damage three. And then each time an attack is made with this weapon against the vehicle unit on a successful unmodified wound roll of five plus, the target suffers four mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. So two big things of note right here. There's no negative one to hit with this weapon, so it is hitting on twos. He has seven attacks right off the bat, so you're probably going to hit with like six of those attacks. And then with strength 14, you should be wounding just about everything on threes. A lot of stuff you're going to be wounding on twos as well. So you're on average going to score like four or five wounds with this weapon. Now the AP2 is not that great i mean if you're going up against something like a terminator with a storm shield you're talking about basically ap1 you're going to take it up to ap3 so you're maybe going to kill one guy if he fails to save not very good alternatively if you put him up against a vehicle he's probably going to score like six hits on a vehicle and then more likely than not out of those six hits he's going to get two five ups to wound so against the vehicle, he's going to do eight mortal wounds right off the bat with his five and six. And then you're also probably going to wound on, assuming it's like toughness eight, two more times on top of that at minus two. Most vehicles are going to be a two or a three up save. So probably another one of those is going to go through for another three damage. So against a vehicle, he's going to average like eight mortal wounds and three damage. Against the Terminator or something like that, he's really not going to do much at all. So you have to be very, very selective for what you're sending Vashtor in. Because he's not particularly amazing at combat, and he's definitely not amazing at shooting. So interesting, definitely cool. I think I would rather see his hammer just always have that rule, not against vehicles. But I mean, realistically, you just have to be a little more selective as to what you fight with him. All right, so next we see the Warp Strike ability, which is basically your Deep Strike. Body of the Unholy Artifice. This model has a 4-up and vulnerable save. Each time an attack is allocated to this model, subtract 1 from the damage characteristic to a minimum of 1. So he has minus 1 damage and a 4-up and vulnerable save. 
So two up, four up is really nice, obviously. Pretty much about as good as it gets. And then minus one damage, excellent as well. So he is durable. I think the key here is, is that he's a good character. He's durable. And he has some synergies, which we're about to talk about. But he is not just some hammer that you send in there uh, to just go fight like your biggest battles by any means. All right, so next we have the Will of the Arcfane. In your command phase, you can select one of the following abilities. Unholy Mechanisms. When you select this ability, select one friendly Trader Astartes Demon Engine model, excluding character, aircraft, and titanic units, within three inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time this model makes an attack, add one to the attack's hit roll. So plus one to hit for a demon engine, cannot be a character, aircraft, or titanic, has to be within three inches of Vashtor. It's okay. Ghost in the Machine. When you select this ability, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to this model. Until the start of your next command phase, half the range characteristic of ranged weapons models in that unit are equipped with. So that is pretty good. You can take something that's just kind of sitting on the back line, using its maximum range to hit stuff, and then basically just take it out of the game. Because you cut its range in half, and now it can't hit you. Now it is worth noting though, anything with over 36 inch range, this isn't going to work well on because you're going to have to move Vashtor within 18. You cut their range in half from 36 down to 18 and then they can still shoot you or move up and shoot you if need be. But it could definitely be a powerful ability. And then finally we have Agonized Machine Spirits. When you select this ability, select one enemy vehicle unit within 18 of and visible to this model. Until the start of your next command phase, half the move and attacks characteristics of models in that unit. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now, back to the video. So that is really good. So you're going to pick a vehicle unit. So it could be a single vehicle. It could be a squadron of light vehicles. But you're going to cut their move in half and their attacks in half. That is definitely a big deal. This could be really strong. You could potentially use it to eliminate a Dreadnought or something like that, even if you're going to smash into it with the Demon Engine or Vashtor himself. Uh, cutting their attacks in half is definitely a big deal, especially if on average you're going to block half those shots with your Invulnerable save, and then suddenly a Command Point reroll is not nearly as big a deal if your opponent went from having six attacks down to three, and then you already blocked half of them without the reroll, you potentially take like zero damage. And same thing with the movement too. Somebody may be counting on a specific movement to get to an objective or get a charge off on a character or vehicle or something of yours. And this can substantially hinder the game. These abilities are pretty strong. Typically when you see an ability that affects your opponent's units, it's rather measured. Games Workshop rule set tends to favor upgrading your own units as opposed to downgrading your opponent's. Uh, but in this case, Vashtor is definitely downgrading his opponent's units, and it is very strong. And then on to Warlord trait. If Vashtor the Arcfane gains a Warlord trait, they must have the Lord of Terror Warlord trait from the Chaos Space Marine Codex. And then we see all of his faction keywords and regular keywords. He is a monster, a character, he can fly, he's a demon, agent of chaos, and the Arcfane. And he is one model, 260 points. So pretty good overall. I think you really have to utilize his Will of the Arcfane abilities to really get your points out of this guy. Plus one to hit on one of your own demon engines is okay, but you really need to use like Ghost in the Machine or Agonize Machine Spirits to take one of your opponent's strong like shooting or combat units kind of like out of the game, at least for a turn or two. If you play this right, you could potentially make a vehicle useless for a turn or just or a strong shooting unit with limited range. Uh, there's definitely some stuff there. Part of that is just going to come down to what's in your opponent's army, whether or not this is going to be a really good ability. So I think Vashtor is really good overall. I think he is probably pointed appropriately. He has some cool abilities, some pretty cheeky stuff. I don't think he's going to be breaking the game or anything like that, in my opinion. 
I think basically what you're going to come down to on this army is you just want to have a ton of demon engines because that's basically going to be like your damage output. Uh, and then you want to focus on just kind of like hyping up those demon engines to do the most damage. Vashtor is pretty good. And if he's still alive late game is probably going to be pretty strong. But you have to be very, very selective of what you're doing with him because he is definitely not just some hammer that you can throw at everything and expect destruction. He's pretty durable. He can definitely do some damage, but he is much more survivable than he is at dishing out massive amounts of damage. Now, if you put him in the right scenario up against the vehicle and he rolls well, you could easily be dishing out 8, 12, or even 16 mortal wounds if you roll well. Uh, so you can smoke a vehicle in a single round of combat. But against anything with decent armor value, especially something like Terminators or something like that, uh, you know, their two up save becomes a one up and then it goes back to a three up. So that is not where you want to have Vash for. And probably if he's fighting some Terminators with shields, they probably have Thunder Hammers or something like that as well, which means they're going to be wounding him on threes and still doing quite a bit of damage. So yeah, I think he's cool. He has some cool abilities, but you do have to play selectively with him. I don't think this is going to be a game changer though. I mean, he's definitely going to be popular. It's a new model. He's cool. It's a new way to play the army. But honestly, I just looking at these rules right here without figuring out any like super combos or anything like that. I just don't see this being like a super competitive army or anything. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be thematic. And I think it's cool because it's more options. But it doesn't appear to be broken or anything like that to me. And I don't think it's going to be winning any tournaments anytime soon. And I have to say that this is a little bit of a letdown. I do prefer that Games Workshop doesn't try to constantly outdo itself and break the game. But honestly, this is just a little bit lackluster. It seems like you give up a lot and you don't get much in return with this army, honestly. But maybe I'm missing something. If you are a dedicated Chaos player out there, let me know. It's been a while since I played with Chaos. And honestly, I'm really waiting to get back into Chaos until the World Leaders Combat Patrol comes back out. I've got Angron just patiently waiting in his box. He's tried to escape a couple times, but I've just stacked some other stuff on top of it. And he's still trapped in there for now. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. If you're going to be picking up Wrath of the Soul Forge King or any of the other cool stuff coming out this weekend, make sure to check them out to save 15%. Link in the description. Make sure you let them know that Warhammer Man sent you. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm not quite sure I'm ready to give up my soul to the uh, king just yet. And I'm out of here.